Hello everyone, my name is Andre and I'm a blockchain engineer and developer advocate for Chainlink Protocol at Chainlink Labs. In this technical tutorial, we will cover how one can build hybrid smart contracts and DeFi apps on Arbitrum using Chainlink price feeds. But before we start, what exactly is Arbitrum? Arbitrum is one of the optimistic rollups on Ethereum. At the moment, transactions are expensive and slow on Ethereum. And because of this, there are several different scaling solutions, including layer two rollups, state and payment channels, side chains, plasma, and validium. The most important difference is that rollups and state channels inherit the security of layer one or Ethereum blockchains. That basically means that one builds off top of layer one, and that's why they're called layer two. Layer two rollups are composed of optimistic rollups and ZK rollups. They're both through layer two solutions, which means they execute a bunch of transactions very fast and very cheap on layer two, and then verify that bulk of the transactions on layer one. With optimistic rollups, we optimistically believe that these transactions really happened on layer two. These rollups are optimistic because the bundles are considered innocent until proven guilty by fraud proofs. So let's dive right in. So Arbitrum 1, as I said, is the layer 2 of the Ethereum mainnet. We are going to cover the development on Arbitrum testnet, which is uh, a layer 2 for Rinky by testnet. But the same applies for, for mainnet later, of course. Uh, the, the whole working example is available at this GitHub link. Uh, but we are going, so you can just clone it and just uh, you know, clone it and start working with it. So all the instructions are in the readme file, but we are going to cover uh, the development step by step. So the first thing, because Arbitrum testnet is a layer two testnet for Rinkeby testnet and Arbitrum one mainnet is a layer two for Ethereum mainnet. Uh, we first need to some Rinkeby testnet. Uh, so, uh, uh, first we need to go to fosses.chain.link and grab some Rinkeby testnet. Uh, okay, so uh, here I'm going to uh, switch to Rinkeby testnet, grab my uh, testnet account, select here Rinkeby testnet, uh, paste my uh, wallet account and select 0.1 test ETH. Uh, I need to go through this captcha. So uh, select all of these images. Good. And now I'm sending the request. Here is my transaction hash. I just need to wait for confirmation. And, and that's pretty much it. So at fossils.chain.link, uh, one can grab a, a lot of um, test uh, tokens from 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 various different uh, different networks not not just rinky by okay the request is completed i can just check this uh, this transaction hash for a moment uh, so uh, it's, it's still pending on etherscan etherscan needs some time to uh, to to grab it uh, but if I go to my MetaMask, I can uh, see that that I, I, I got all of these Rinkeby testnet, test, uh, test coins. Okay, the, the transaction is success, was successful. Good. Next thing. Uh, so we need to deposit now these Ethers from Rinkeby uh, to uh, Arbitrum testnet on Rinkeby. So uh, we need this uh, to, to bridge these test eaters in order to pay fees on Arbitrum layer 2 testnet. So to do that, we need to go to Arbitrum Bridge. So this is bridge.arbitrum.io network. Uh, I'm just uh, log out to, to see the whole flow. So I need to connect my MetaMask wallet. And boom, uh, we're connected. Uh, just uh, wait a couple more seconds. Okay, we are connected. You can see my amount, my balance 
on, on Rinkibai and also my layer 2 balance because I already bridged some tokens uh, during uh, ma uh, making this, this repo. Uh, okay, so uh, to bridge these tokens I need to select some amount of tokens. I will bridge whole amount, so I get from the faucet 0 0.1 and I need to click just deposit and that's it. Uh, okay, this is like a info message, it will take 10 minutes, would you like to proceed? And I just need to uh, click deposit, uh, I need to confirm my, so you, you see here this is a Rinkibyte test network transaction, click confirm. And we now have a pending deposit L1 transaction. Uh, the bridging was a success. Uh, we have uh, this amount of test Arbitrum Ethers on uh, Ring Carby Testnet. But uh, to, in order to, to see it in MetaMask, we need to add Arbitrum Ring Carby Testnet uh, as, as a new network. So go here, uh, now select settings. Uh, networks and then add Arbitrum testnet with these parameters. So Arbitrum testnet, RPC URL is HTTPS rinkibyte.arbitrum.io uh, slash RPC. Chain ID is 421611. So 421.611. Uh, Optional parameters uh, symbol is currency symbol is ETH block explorer URL is testnet.rbscan.io. Uh, save this and then you you can see uh, your coins on Arbitrum testnet. So this is Arbitrum testnet. This is our layer two amount. Nice. Now that we have some some uh, uh, some. Uh, Arbitrum Ethers. Lastly, we can go to this fosses.chain.link. Uh, I'll just refresh it for, for, for to see this default page. And then you can see there's Arbitrum Rinkibai testnet. So if I choose Arbitrum Rinkibai testnet and paste my wallet address again, uh, solve this captcha. I can uh, request 10 testnet link tokens from this faucet on Arbitrum Rinke by testnet. This is on Arbitrum Rinke by testnet. Now we can start coding. Uh, we can start by creating a new Solidity project in your favorite code editor. As I said, the fully working example uh, using hardhat with TypeScript is available on this GitHub repo. So feel free, feel free to, to check it out. But for purpose of this demo, I'm going to use Remix ID. So this is a Remix uh, ID. I, I created a new workspace. I mean, I will going to create a new, a new contract and I will just name it uh, price fit consumer on Arbitrum or price fit consumer v3 whatever uh, so price feed consume or this is even better arbitrum price feed consumer dot so we have a new uh, a new contract so if i go to this uh, page in the documentation so using data feeds i can uh, grab this uh, solidity boilerplate code for 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 getting price fits but I will adjust it a little bit so we can grab for now this solidity version and import uh, chaining contracts from from chaining contract aggregator v3 interface uh, our contract name is contract arbitrum price feed consumer and I will zoom this a little bit so it can 
be easily to, to follow. Okay, now it's it's easy to follow. Nice. So if I compile this, everything should work working fine. If I selected a proper version of compiler, and I did. Now the next stuff. So uh, as I said, uh, we are going to use this uh, this sample, but I will arrange it just a little bit. So I can just grab this function return the, to, to get latest price it's a view function and now inside this uh, this function I will do something like this so aggregator with three int with three interface price feed is aggregator with through interface and I will pass here address price feed address and price feed address price feed let us price feed it should working fine in a docs the price feed is hard coded in constructor uh, but uh, with our solution we are passing it as function parameter and now we can uh, query all of the available price feeds on arbitrum so if i go here Arbitrum data feeds. I can see all of the addresses on mainnet, both on mainnet, but also on Arbitrum Rinke by testnet, which we are going to use right now. Okay, next stuff. Now that we have uh, our basic get price, get latest price function, uh, what I can do? I can pass this address, for example. So this is uh, ETH in terms of USD as as like a parameter of this function. So if I just uh, create a comment section here, and I can uh, I can just specify it like this. So the network is Arbitron Rinkeby and uh, aggregator as I said aggre Gator is ETH USD and the aggregator address is the one that I copied right now. So I'm just I'm not going to hard code it inside the constructor, but I will pass it as, as an argument. And this is just as an example. I can use all of these price feeds for Arbitrum Rinkeby. But this is not everything um, we are we're almost done uh, but before uh, finishing uh, let me present to you l2 sequencers health flag so optimistic rollups keep all of execution off chain and keep all transaction data available on chain using a special off-chain component called sequencer. So what is this sequencer? The sequencer executes and rolls up all the layer 2 transactions by batching them into a single one on layer 1. If sequencer becomes unavailable, it becomes impossible to access APIs that consumers are using and only experienced developer will know how to interact with the contracts which would be unfair. Because of that, uh, we need to include, uh, because of that, uh, we need to include an extra track in our Solidity code base for this tutorial. Uh, this doesn't mean that the layer two network has stopped. This is just important note. So to, to do this, we need to import this line of code. We need to import flag interface. Okay and we need to uh, according to, to this doc we need to expand our contract with with the next line uh, uh, so we need uh, this okay and i can just put it as a constant right here okay address constant private this is all good uh, this is flag 
Arbitrum Sequencer offline uh, flag. Okay, uh, this is a flag to, to notice if a sequencer is offline or not. Or not. Uh, next line, we also need this. So, flags interface internal chainlink flags. Perfect. And I need to do something like this in, in a constructor. So, constructor chainlink flags equals flags interface and we need a value so if i go back to sequencer okay so flag address is this one i can just put it in this comment to to have it here but this is the the flag interface sequencers for arbitrum ring by testnet okay so this is on Arbitrum Ringebuy. You can see in the official docs that they also did this in, in a constructor. And the final check. Uh, we need something like this. So I'll just copy paste this code. And then I will explain to you why we are doing this. Okay, copy paste, boolean is raised. Uh, if the, the flag is raised, we shouldn't perform any critical operations because uh, the, the sequencer is, is down, down. So a raised flag will determine that the feed wasn't updated in some amount of time, t for example, and its data can be considered, cannot be cons can be considered stale. In other words, the sequencer went offline and your contract shouldn't perform any critical operations. When the sequencer comes back up again and the layer 2 chainlink data feeds are updated, you can continue using your contracts and as, as usual. So this extra check is, is final step to create a price feed consumer on Arbitrum. And that's it, we are, we are all done. I can just uh, zoom out this so you can see the whole code base again but yeah this is it this is our whole code base for for this tutorial last step is to to deploy this to to testnet if I go to select injector to web just need to I am on Arbitrum testnet. I have this amount of, of test token, should be working fine. If I go to Arbitrum price with consumer, I, I can just deploy it. I need to sign this transaction. This is a contract deployment, confirm it. Transaction is confirmed. Okay, this is the the price feed consumer, and last step, I can just query for ETH price in terms of USD on Arbitrum, and I I got it. I just need to zoom this a little bit so you guys can see this. This is the current price of Ethereum in terms of USD on Arbitrum Rinkibyte. Uh, so thank of, thanks everyone for following this tutorial. I hope you find it interesting and useful and see you around.